Hey, good morning everyone, I'm Patrick and I'm gonna show you how to inflate the LCAT Splash. We're getting ready to head out on a three-day camping trip. This new boat is so slick, all inflatable, and it's got a center console for driving. So check it out. First thing I'm gonna do is unroll it. What's cool about this is one person can do all the work. Looking good, it's starting to fill up. This has only been about, what, three minutes or so? So the whole boat will take about 15 minutes to inflate. You see the, on the Elcat Splash, the front, the bow has a nice little scoop so you can take on the big waves. Two PSI can be achieved with the main and then five PSI with both the boosters on. And all of our flat elements, like our floor and our sides and our roof, have to be upwards of six PSI. But then the two rounded elements go to about three PSI. Here we go. So the two switches, you know. You'll notice that they have a built-in spring. So that's out and then this is in. When the, when the spring is in, air is gonna come out. When the spring is out, it's locked. You can fill it up either way with the pump. I like to fill it first with it in so that you get a high volume fill. Then once you get into high pressure, fill it, you fill it while it's out. We're what, eight minutes into our inflate and you can see the boat come to life. Boom! And remember, the seats are cylinders, so they only require three PSI, but then all the flat parts, the roof, the walls, and the floor, upwards of six PSI. And as I fill this up, I'm not gonna go too tight on this back one, because I'm gonna run a couple of things underneath it. Uh, for the motor between the center console and the motor. Okay, if I don't like where the thwart is located or the tightness here, I've got Velcro as well as a little uh, sliding buckle here to release tension. And I can move the thwart around, rotate it. Uh, we've got a little bit of forward and backwards motion and then this gives it a nice tight lock. Now we've got everything pumped up with the, with the big Bravo pump and now it's time to top it off with the Hijmar. And this is, it's got a nice little reading. We can preset it to what we want. I'm in the shade, but I'm about to go into the sun. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna set it up with five and a half PSI, plug it into my 12 volt source and hit go. The LCAT splash. You can have an option to, to have it with vinyl windows. Those are on the sides, and front and back. Um, these things are super convenient when the weather turns on you or if you're camping on it like we are. Um, but if you don't want them, I'm gonna roll them up and then you can just clip them up and out of the way. So I'm gonna do that now. When you need them, you're gonna be real glad you've got them. They're really high grade vinyl, so they're surprisingly clear out of the way. The next step is we're gonna add the center console and uh, it connects, you can see these little connections here in the center of the boat floor. But like I said earlier, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna slip this cable underneath the thwart there. Get the console hooked up. but these guys get backed off quite a bit before you can get, see, there you go. And you wanna push that all the way in, nice and tight, and then um, lock down these. So now your center console is rigged up nice and strong off this big old wooden plate here in the center of the LCAT. Okay. okay, so the steering wheel is right in the middle of its extension, and I'm gonna go ahead and first put the steering cable into the remote kit's uh, cylindrical mounting system. 
slide that in. And now I can basically mount the motor on the transom. And so this cable is pretty stiff, but obviously it's a cable, so you got plenty of wiggle room. You want to clamp this on pretty solid. I want to go ahead and put the nut on. And this, I've found that really, you know, obviously you don't want to cross thread. You don't want to let that loosen up. This is where I need to connect this part of the remote kit to, to the steering cable. And the steering cable is controlled by the steering wheel. So what I'm going to do is carefully take off this wing nut and washer. And then I'm going to try to match the distances of the steering cable and this, uh, this L-shaped rod. So you want to make sure that it's fully seated here before putting the washer and wing nut on. Doing this over water may not be recommended. And this wing nut gets tightened down quite a lot. And that's nice and secure. Okay, so we've got the motor mounted onto the transom and we've got the steering, the steering cable attached to the remote kit. Now I'm going to tilt the motor back down. I'm in a little bit of a deeper water. I've got about a foot and a half of water. And I'm going to put the battery on. The battery is about 35 pounds and it links up to a couple of slots. Bam, it's just that easy. I always want to give that a good test, make sure I'm happy. Connecting motor and battery. That's done. Then I want you to come around here. This is a very important connection. This is the communications cable. This is basically running from the controller and the throttle to the motor. So you'll notice a little splining here. The connection for this is actually underneath the motor. So it's, it's a little bit hard to see. And what I want to do when I connect this is I want this cable to be behind everything in the motor. So I'm going to run it down and through. I'm going to make sure my splining is connected. Boom, connect it in and tighten it. And then I'm going to take the cable. And if you notice, there's these little tiny strain reliefs. So I'm going to put the cable inside the strain relief up here and that's done. Okay, then this is the connector coming from the motor and you'll notice there are some splining. There's some, some a tiny little bit of a spline there. We're gonna connect that right here. That's the back side of the throttle. The front side of the throttle is already connected to the controller. Okay, so that just slips in and a little tighten on the sort of uh, strain reliever and that's all set up. Okay, finally, we're gonna attach the solar charge controller. This is gonna help extend our range. We're actually out on a three-day camping trip right now, and this has essentially increased our range by about 50%. So the solar charge controller has a limitation of distance here, and it's gonna to connect to the same charging port as you use when you're, running the, when you're charging the battery with AC. And again, tighten up that strain relief. And then here's our solar for this boat. It's being routed off the roof and down this wall. And once the solar connects, you'll see green. And that's just basically saying that it's ready. It's also green when the battery's fully charged. And then while charging, you'll see it turn to red. A turtle, that's pretty cool. So this is how we've decided to mount the charge controller for now. Um, we've got the output going up to the motor, running on the on the starboard and then the input right here going up to the solar solar on the rooftop baby okay now we've got everything wired up and it's time to hold that down for two seconds she fires right up there's all kinds of things you can do with this control and you've got the throttle of course but let's just push the throttle forward and we'll see you know we're pulling 66 watts on the right and you're showing the RPMs on the left, and then you've got your 
battery percentage up here. You can't believe what a joy a boat can be when you don't have to listen, you know, stop your conversation every time you want to run about. And I uh, just wanted to set up, let's set up the swim ladder here. Super slick and super simple. Cute little handy strap down here on the bottom. how you get up on the roof. And this is how you get down. Okay, so it's really just this simple. The center console works just like any other boat. Forward throttle and neutral and reverse. One thing you will notice on, on the throttle is um, it takes a slight little pull out in order to engage. The other thing is a little kill switch at the bottom here, just a little set of cylindrical magnets. Uh, but, you know, unlike the tiller mode of the Ghost on LCAT, the El LCAT splash with center console, turn right and go right, turn left and go left. And of course, any of you who have experience with boats, you know, you got full working reverse in the same basic techniques. And reverse, just like on your car, is opposite. But your, your users, you'll figure that out. It's a great tool for kids to learn how to drive a boat. It's extremely safe. You've got nothing but inflatable, durable cushion all around. These things are so strong, you can slam into just about anything. Lion. Making waves. Well, thank you for watching this how to video on the LCAT splash. We hope to see you splash around in the water.